Welcome to this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live, the show which ensures that you profit from your time spent here with experts, either through the industry insights, information, or simply learning from them. And today we have Terry Allen. He is the founder of A Mentor for Me. He's had a 37-year career in public policy as a congressional staffer, think tank president, political campaign advisor, and a consultant to some of America's leading companies. Welcome to the show, Terry. Thank you. Good to be here. You're welcome to the show, Terry. You are welcome to India in this online form. And I'm sure not just in India, but a lot of people across the globe will benefit from what we'll discuss right now. We'll be talking about finding a mentor and how one can become a mentor. So first to understand from you, Terry, you know about uh, you have been a DC political insider. So in terms of the elections and all that noise or dust that happens during elections, uh, how do you see it from a, a mentorship sort of a perspective, from a leadership sort of a perspective? Uh, all this politics, whatever it is, how is the young generation taking it? Because this is where uh, they get to, you know, decide about the things. They get those impressions about, about what sort of a society we are or we are going to become. Help us understand being a DC political insider. Well, that's a great question. I don't, I don't get uh, asked that very much because my careers are so, uh, my, my, my last 37 years in public policy is so different than what I'm doing right now. I'm still engaged. I still have a few clients. I still work in that arena. But what I'm doing over on the mentoring side is so different that uh, it's, I don't get asked that question a lot. I think what I would say is that that question is that there is a lack of, uh, in young people, there's a lack of institutional knowledge. There's a lack of institutional memory. A lot of people coming up now, their, their political world has been shaped by the last five years. And what we've seen in the last five, seven years is an anomaly. Um, some of the rules that used to apply don't apply. And it's, it's just unfortunate. It's kind of scary. Um, a lot of problems. The system's dysfunctional. Uh, so it's, it's quite concerning um, <laughs> on many levels, fiscally and morally. It's just a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a big mess in Washington, D.C. Uh, we have a lack of leadership. We have a lack of authority. We have a crisis of authority. People don't know who they can trust. Uh, it's a challenge. And uh, so, but it's very different than, you know, that's, that's my career that I've spent 37 years in. And, uh, but what I'm doing right now is, is, is a little bit different. It's unique and it's, it's very needed. And it's a mentoring, connecting younger men with older men for the purpose of spiritual formation and growth. Right, right. Connecting younger men with older men. Why not older leadership? Why not young, you know, older leadership that can actually give that why not good old political leadership is there? Because when we talk of mentoring, you know, why, why, why old people? A lot of people can be quite cynical. Why do you have so much of hope from young, older people for the young generation? I want to understand this from you, Terry. Well, this is really about, it's really about spiritual growth. It's really about spiritual formation and growth. We're, we're designed to connect, to connect younger men to older men, younger believers in Jesus, younger Christians to older Christians for the purpose of spiritual formation and growth in Christ and becoming more like Jesus, like the Bible tells us. So this is very much a Christian uh, design for Christians, for believers in, in Jesus, uh, New Testament Christians, and, uh, so, and for spiritual growth and formation. So the Bible commands believers to make disciples, to replicate their faith in younger people, and that's what the Apostle Paul did. That's the pattern we have in Scripture. And that's what we're trying to do through a mentor for me. It's a connection platform to allow younger men to find an older mentor. Older men have life experience. They have work experience. They have family experience. They have spiritual equity. They have wisdom. They have um, so much to offer. And younger men are looking for that. They're looking to be successful. They're looking to, you know, to learn skills, to be able to find answers that provide you know, functional working uh, solutions for their lives. And that's what we can, uh, we help them provide. Right, right, Terry. Why do you think uh, spirituality is the way for, you know, for the future? And why this young generation, what about the corporates? 
there also there is a crisis of leadership you advise a lot of people there you know a lot of people there uh, what they can learn from you know in in terms of spirituality is it only for the young people outside who are outside the system or is it also for a lot of not just you know political leadership but also corporate leadership <clears throat> needs to learn about these things are you doing that uh, are you being successful if at all you are doing that from this point of view yeah yeah i mean the the essence of scripture the effort, the, the essence of biblical truth is that <clears throat> truth is truth and truth applies to all of life um e equals mc squared is true right well jesus said i am the way and the truth and the life so if jesus is the truth and e equals mc squared they're both true and if god is the creator of the entire universe then what he says is true so truth is truth and truth applies and so the nature of the you know the biblical worldview is that that truth is truth and that jesus you know the book of colossians talks about jesus being the creator of all things all things were created by him for him through him and and to him and so um you know he is truth and so when we connect people to christ when we connect people to jesus we're connecting people to the source of truth, to the author of truth. So, um, yeah, so we're we're connecting younger men uh, all across America with older men who have years and years and decades of spiritual formation, growth, experience, spiritual equity, answers to life's problems, answers to marriage problems, answers to financial problems, answers to questions about their career. You know, how do how do I find a how do I find a wife? How do I find a, a, a good job? Should I be concerned about my future? Middle aged guys have questions about retirement. How do I prepare for my retirement? Um, how do I make my marriage work in this very hostile world that we live in? You know, older guys want to know they want to know how do I finish well? How do I how do I make it last? How do I finish strong? So it's not just younger men that need mentors. Older men need mentors too. middle aged guys need mentors. Um, the biblical model, the model we see in scripture in the Bible is that everybody should have a mentor. Everybody should have an older mentor and everybody should be mentoring younger men. That's the biblical model that we're given in the New Testament. Um, and so that's what we're trying to trying to help people uh, implement in their lives. Right, right, Teddy. Now, in terms of, you know, you talk about success, you talk about successful people, you talk about one thing that all successful people have in common uh what is your definition of success sometimes you know people can think okay i have achieved this uh thing big po position uh politically so that is success but not doing making any impact on any anybody except themselves leadership corporate leadership you have taken the big position big chair but not making any impact there so i want to understand what is your understanding of success and what is this young generation that you are trying to get them mentored and to get them into spirituality? How should they understand this version of success? <clears throat> well, um, my understanding of success is shaped by, uh, by the Bible and by biblical understanding. And it, the Bible has much to say. My, it, it's shaped by my faith by my Christian faith. The Christian faith, the Bible has much, much to say about success. Um, in fact, this book over my shoulder up here, this one right there, it's a, a book on wisdom that uh, ancient King Solomon of ancient Israel about 3000 years ago wrote that book of Proverbs. And that book is about the book of Proverbs. Uh, it's, a, it's about uh, finding success in life in different areas of your life. But if you had to boil down the definition of success, Success is that in the Christian faith, my faith teaches me that success is, is that God is pleased with me. Uh, I'm successful if God is pleased and happy. And there's only one path to do that, and that's through trust. Uh, without trust in any relationship, whether it's a marriage, a friendship, or whatever, there can be no relationship. It's built on trust. And when God approaches man uh, in Genesis chapter 12, God approaches Abraham and says, I want to initiate a, a plan to rescue the human race from the from the loss and darkness, lostness and darkness that it, that the human race is in. He bases the whole relationship and the whole process on trust. And God reveals through the last, you know, 5000 years of history. God has revealed that 
our path to success in life is to trust him. And through our trust in him and our relationship with him, find the answers, find the, the identity that he created for us, the identity that he had created for us to walk in and find our purpose in him, find our, our pleasure in him, find our peace in him and find our success in him, in his purposes for our life. So, you know, the Christian faith is a total worldview. It's a worldview of that answers the questions, who am I? Why am I here? Uh, what will make me happy? How should I live my life? What principles should guide my life? And ultimately, what will happen after I die? That's a worldview. And the Christian worldview uh, is based upon that, uh, yeah, that we trust God. And as we trust God, God will show us how to live, uh, what life is all about, what brings meaning and what brings purpose. And frankly, you know, that's what I wish for younger, the younger generation. I hope that they find, I want them to find the answers that, that Jesus offers, that God offers through uh, the Bible, through his word. Right, right, Terry. So, uh, can we find examples of successful people in our time, in present times? Because there is always, whenever people talk about, we always tend to go to the past. Nothing wrong about it, but somewhere it gives an impression that there are no big names to be taken. Then that's where the MAGA debate and all those things, I'm not going to that. But all these things, then it comes out very convoluted in whatever real message that is supposed mm -hmm. to be taken. I want to understand that if you uh, can have examples of successful people that people can think of in today's time, it would be interesting to understand it from your point of view. Yeah, Terry. yeah absolutely. Well, you know, we have, we have, uh, we have uh, men on our site who you can look at their biography. You can look at their, their, their uh, experience and their life experience, and you, you can select them as mentors. So, you know, people go to mentorforme.com. Do I put it here in the in the little chat? Right. Put the put the link in the chat. Let me just tap this here. Yeah, I'll also put it on the in the YouTube description also. Yeah, there you go. So I just put yeah. it in the I just put it in the chat. That's the website. And if people go to that site, they'll see that we have right now, we have 13 mentors that we've trained that are examples of men who've, who are successful. And, 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 and you know, it's not that they're perfect yes. because in those 13 men that we've trained as mentors, and we have about a dozen more being trained right now. So in about another couple of weeks, we'll have 20. And then in about a month after that, we'll have about 30. We're, so we're growing right now in the numbers of men that we're training. It's not that they're perfect. I mean, we have we have men that that uh, you know that we're that are that we've trained and that are going through mentor our mentor training that have experienced just about every kind of crisis you can experience from you know from divorce and 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 uh, you know d rebellious children to mental health to addiction to all kinds of challenges that people face but they've overcome and they've learned through failure uh, you know bankruptcy divorce they've learned through failure. Um, how to heal. They've learned God's plan and purpose through struggle, through crisis. And uh, it's not that people are perfect, but that people have through their faith learned through um, learned how to deal and how to cope and provide can provide answers for younger guys. So you know, it's not just our side. It's, you know, there's we all want to look to to kind of like, uh, you know, identifiable marquee names that can be that are examples of success. And you can certainly find that in, you know, business and sports and entertainment and, and even politics and other areas. But, you know, you can look across the culture and you can see millions of people who've been successful and who are successful, who are who are relatively obscure. They're toiling and laboring every day in obscurity and they're faithful husbands and faithful wives and, and faithful fathers and they're hard workers and they're very strong citizens and they're. They're decent people that are doing the best they can and learning how to apply God's grace in their lives. Uh, there's successful people all around us. Uh, and that's what we're really trying to do with this website is to try to help people identify who are those people that, you know, that I can reach out to in my community or maybe that share my interests or that are um, that are um, uh, compatible that uh, that I can I can learn from.
Right, right. So you talked about one uh, thing that all successful people have in common. What is that one thing that you uh, want <laughs> to share? Yeah. The one thing that all successful people have in common is they don't do life on their own. No one is successful on their own. We're not designed to be an island. We need other people. We are created by our creator with needs that only other people can fill. And it's not just that, that we need help in terms of assistance. Yes, we need help. We need assistance. We need guidance. We need answers. We need advice. We need um, uh, somebody to share with, somebody to give us what we need at the moment. But we also need other people to inconvenience us, to challenge us, and to correct us. See, there's a principle in the Christian faith called sanctification, and it's kind of like sandpaper. It's, you know, you cut a piece of wood and it's rough and it's abrasive and it's not very, you know, usable, but you take sandpaper to it. You take the rough sandpaper, then you take the medium grade sandpaper, then you take the fine sandpaper. And if you, if you sand it enough, it becomes smooth and nice and, you know, and you can, it's, it's different, right? It's, it's refined. Well, that's the pro, that's the sanctification process. And when we submit and trust the Lord, when we trust God, he will use other people in our lives to help us, but he also uses other people in our lives to irritate us and to change us, to inconvenience us, to challenge us and to correct us. And so that's the part of what we don't understand. We don't like that, right? We don't, nobody wants to be inconvenienced. Nobody wants somebody telling them what to do. But if we will embrace that, and we will embrace what's called community, right? We want isolation. We want to be isolated. We want freedom. We want freedom from anything. We want to be on our own. We want to be, we want to do life on our own. We want, you know, we want to have it our way. But God's design is community where we need other people. So if you look at successful people, no one's done it on their own. They've all gleaned from the experience of older people and other people that have helped them along the way. Right. So the question now is that uh, who can be my mentor? How do I know that? And where do I find such a person? Mm -hmm. Obviously, one can Google it, but then perhaps Google doesn't have all the answers. Right. Businesses, they go for a mastermind. You go for a lot of things. So help us understand that. How can one find the right mentor? And a lot of people who are not so successful in life, they think they have nothing to share. Yeah. They can, can they be also a mentor? To yes, someone absolutely. Yeah. Now, our, our site, our site is designed for Christian men who want to be mentors or Christian men who want to find a mentor. So if someone is of another faith, then they're probably not going to feel comfortable in, in our, on our platform, in our environment. But if someone is um, open to the Christian faith, they're seeking answers and they want to be mentored by an older Christian man. And by the way, we do have a women's site that's coming soon. We want to have a women's site later. That we, we, we're working on that. But right now it's for men. Um, but if, you, if, a, if a person wants to be mentored by a Christian man, they can go to a mentor for me. The four is the number four, not the, uh, you know, not the, the FOR was taken. That was a URL that was already taken. But we got this URL. We've been up and running about a year. We have 270 people who've signed up to be either mentors or mentees. And we have about 13 mentors that we train. And people can go there and they can look at the bio. Uh, they click select a mentor and they can look at the biographical information of the different mentors that we've trained. And they can select one and, and reach out and send them an email or send them a text and say, hey, how would you like to get coffee or how would you like to have a Zoom call? And that's how they can get involved. Or if you'd like to be a mentor and you'd like to go through our mentor training, just select become a mentor at our site. Go to our site and select become a mentor. Right, right. And One we'll last question. put them in a training session. Serious. So, Terry, one last question I want to understand for the audience is that people talk about a new world order either in terms of setting in, either in terms of political way, political people will talk about that. 
uh, in terms of technology, the artificial intelligence has come in. So people might uh, use it in that sense. A lot of people are using it in terms of spirituality. What will be the role of spirituality amidst, you know, so many, amidst two wars going on the planet at the moment? Then a lot of talk about artificial intelligence taking over their, our lives. Where do you see this spirituality, you know, finding its place in the so-called New World Order? Mm -hmm. Well, New World Order to me is a synonym for, for, uh, for change. For some, some would say progress. Some would say it's a regress, right? But it's just change. Things are changing all the time. And if you look at where technology in the world has come in the last 100 years versus 50 years versus even 20 years, you can see that we've made tremendous progress and there's new ways of doing things, right? Even just since COVID, there's new ways of doing things. So new world order is, is there is, yeah, there, we're always having to adopt and to adapt and to change. The, the, the uh, spirituality is critical. It's absolutely critical. And it's important that we don't ignore this because because we are eternal beings. We are spiritual beings. We, whether you believe in Christianity or whether you believe in Hinduism or whether you believe in, in Islam, whatever your faith, or you don't have a faith, you can't deny that we are, we are spiritual beings. We are eternal beings that have a body. And someday this body is going to wear out. It's, you know, you may get 70 years out of it. You may get 80, you may get 90, but someday you're not going to be here anymore. And we are we are eternal beings and spiritual beings. And the and the battles that we see in the world, the wars that we see in the world are, are external reflections of a spiritual war that's happening between good and evil. And that is the question of the day. That is the question of the hour. That is the question that all of us must wrestle with and come to answers, come to answers within our own self, because those consequences are eternal. And I, I don't think there's any more important issue on the front burner today than the nature of the spiritual battle, the nature of the spiritual conflict that's waging in the war today. And I encourage and implore people to uh, investigate it, understand it, process it, uh, seek answers that work for you. Uh, I per personally have, have come to a faith where I'm confident in what I believe. And I implore people that have not wrestled with that, have not taken the time to to consider that. And they need to do that because that's an answer that is that has eternal consequences. Absolutely. There is much to learn from you, Terry. Learn about lots of things about spirituality, about mentoring, the power of mentorship. So a lot of people who want to learn from you, understand about you, be part of a mentor for me. What is the best way for them to do so? Just go to the website, a mentorforme.com, A M E N T O R, the number four, me.com. It's on, it should be on the screen. If you can put it on the screen or on the link, people can hit it and then they just select become a mentor or uh, or find a mentor and we'll be in touch with them. They'll, they got a, it'll take them to a form they can fill out and we can, we can contact them and stay in touch. Absolutely. With this, it's a wrap on this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live. Thank you so much indeed for joining us.